Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank each of you for taking the time to come today. Uh, Mr. Bobeck, I, th I think in your, te your earlier testimony, you mentioned there's some industries like steel, um, cement, paper production that have no alternative to carbon dioxide emissions. With the demand for steel and materials, and I'm a con we're, I'm a general contractor. Um, with steel and materials set to only increase, some companies like um, companies in our area have made it a goal to be carbon neutral by two by 2050. To what extent is the Office of Fossil Energy exploring the application of carbon capture to in to industrial sources such as steel? They've done some great work in this area, and uh, that's why we all, I think everyone at this table, uh, is very bullish on the future of carbon utilization, especially for its application in, in those areas. Um, one of the things we think about, you know, we've talked about building out large pipeline networks, but something carbon utilization does is help you in geographic areas that are more difficult to decarbonize. For instance, if you've got a cement plant, you don't have to necessarily build a pipeline uh, 200 miles away to store it. If you can build some sort of utilization plant nearby, you can utilize that, uh, that CO2 right there. So it cuts the cost of, of the transportation, obviously, and it and creates something of value. So it's, it's a very, very important thing. Um, the, the, uh, the FE R&D program has, has led the way on many of these technologies, but it, uh, it is very explicit in this bill, and we see that as something very important going forward. Okay, in line with that, how should the Office of Fossil Energy prioritize decarbonizing the industrial sector emissions? Well, we think it's, it's critical. It's uh, a little over one-fifth of all uh, CO2 emissions in the U.S., and again, because there, there, there isn't a, a, a simple renewable solution, say, because these are intrinsic to the processes of making these products, it's very important to look at, at different uh, uh, ways of decarbonizing. For instance, pre-combustion decarbonization. We were talking about uh, jet fuel before. It's very hard to decarbonize uh, or, or to, to capture the carbon from jet fuel post-combustion. It's much easier to uh, lower the carbon content uh, at pre-combustion. So uh, we, we would say it's a very important thing, and uh, we commend the committee for, for ha actually having a bill that focuses on this. Okay. And I guess this is, I've got two minutes, but quickly, f I guess for all of you, uh, the Department of en Energy's Advanced Manufacturing Office has been a leader in increased industrial energy efficiency. However, has not paid much attention to more transformative zero emissions pathways. It's been recommended that the AMO, FE, and other relevant DOE offices develop technology roadmaps that could help achieve these pathways with carbon uh, capture being the main component. Do you agree with the strategy? Ms. And we'll start with you. So I, I honestly have not given that as much thought as you have. Um, so I would say that there's always opportunities to leverage across the um, program offices within DOE and, and cross-fertilize their areas of expertise to get real and much better and more efficient results. So, And we need your help on that, getting a roadmap on literally what to do, because it's, it's, it's a... Uh, you, you're flying in the dark unless right. you have specifics, and y'all have that. I agree. And I might add, Congressman, and I'm, uh, the chairman mentioned I'm a former chief of staff at the Department of Energy, so I have enormous respect for the Fossil Energy Office and indeed for the national labs that are playing such a key role in all this. And I would simply say that uh, one of the things uh, about the draft legislation that's so impressive is that it does encourage this broad look, but it also um, it also brings, uh, brings forward, as I say in my testimony, the very best expertise from outside the department, for example, in the form of an advisory committee. The need for technology advice, I think, is terribly important. I think Congress needs it, too, which is why I'll throw in my two cents and endorse the, uh, um, the legislative appropriations bill that the House uh, has moved forward uh, that would reconstitute the Office of Technology Assessment, uh, which 25 years ago was doing a fabulous job of advising the Congress on technology matters, including the kinds of questions you're just asking. OTA needs to be reconstituted, and uh, I think Congress is, in, is right to do that. 
Thank you. I'm out of town. I, a time. I wish we could have gotten to the others. Thank you so much.